When I first visited Rwanda, I found a place that is colorful and vibrant and filled with hope for the future. It is a place so special and unique that I felt I had to share this experience with others. In this episode, I go back to the land of a thousand hills, bringing with me an adventurous band of travelers who will brave mud, swamp, and jungle to find the most magnificent creatures on earth and get to know the incredible story of Rwanda and its people. Together with a group of friends, we traveled from Manila to the lush green hills of Kigali, Rwanda's capital. We were all welcomed by my dear friend Ijin, whom I was with in my last adventure. We were eager to begin this new one as we drove into the city. It was great to be back as I see Kigali's development continue. Voted many times as Africa's cleanest city, you will find new and uncluttered streets. They also implemented a lot of green initiatives, including banning plastic in the whole country altogether. But of course, the nation cannot escape its tragic history. I believe it was necessary to begin our journey here at the Kigali Genocide Memorial to have a full understanding of Rwanda's story. In 1994, some 800,000 Rwandans lost their lives in an orchestrated genocide brought about by economic and political upheavals and ethnic tension. We also dropped by the Hotel de Mille Colline which translates to the Hotel of a Thousand Hills, made famous by the movie Hotel Rwanda. Here, 1,268 people sought refuge during the genocide under the protection of its manager, Paul Lucesa Bagina. But despite the challenges that come with healing, Rwanda has managed to rise above its tragic past. The events of 1994 have become a constant reminder of the importance of unity and acceptance in a diverse society. A truth that every Rwandese holds on to. Armed with this knowledge, we continue our journey to explore the rest of the country. From Kigali, our journey will take us to the savanna and wetlands of Akajir before we head to the thick rainforest of Lungwe. We then end our journey in the volcanic mountains of Virunga where we will come face to face with the magnificent mountain gorillas. Driving through Rwanda's countryside, you will find lush hillsides undulating with terraced farms. Hard-working people till the land as agriculture continues to contribute a large part of the country's economy. After a two-hour drive, we reach the Akajira National Park. At the entrance, we were already greeted by some of the park's residents. We stayed at a peaceful hilltop resort overlooking Lake Ihema. Akajira is one of Africa's oldest national parks and also a story of survival in itself. Suffering the effects of the war and genocide, Akajira became a settlement for refugees and poachers roamed the lands. Timber was cut down and wildlife was almost hunted down to extinction. Thankfully, the authorities were able to mitigate the destruction of the park. Today, 20 years later, 
biodiversity has been restored and the animals enjoy a protected sanctuary. With three SUVs, our group drove around to see the diverse wildlife in the park. From Cape Buffalo, giraffes and zebras, to primates and bird life. In Palace, and Topi roamed the plains. The great thing about Akajir is that there are still more animals than tourists which allows you to drive leisurely and appreciate the amazing scenery. We picked a spot in the grassland where we can stop and have some lunch. This will be our picnic lunch place. Imagine having lunch and while the giraffes are looking at you and while the zebras are walking by. Perfect place. I could not imagine a more perfect spot for a picnic as well as photo ops. We continue to drive and out from the bushes peaks an African elephant. They may be big, but they are incredibly hard to spot. Imagine our surprise when we saw this big herd of elephants just walking past us. There must be at least 30 elephants in this herd, with a lot of young. It was an amazing sight to see these magnificent creatures in such big numbers, and very promising for the future of the park. Akajira is a savanna, but it's dominated by swamps and small lakes scattered in the area. That afternoon, we were up for a different kind of safari. We're in Lake Ehema, and we're going to do our first boat ride today just to see the wild animals. Lake Ehema is one the second largest lake and a very important water source for the large mammals in the park. It also supports a big diversity of bird life. The papyrus swamps provide aquatic birds a supply of food and nesting grounds. As we glided through the glassy waters of the lake, there was always anticipation for what we will see next. Like this huge mouth popping out of the water. Hippos! The third largest mammal in the world, hippos can weigh as much as a small aircraft. They can spend 16 hours of the day in the water huddled in groups. They share the river banks with another heavyweight, the Nile crocodile, Africa's largest and a formidable predator. These crocs can attack buffaloes and wildebeest. Hmm, he seems to be coming towards us. Thankfully, he was not hungry. It was a great afternoon seeing these amazing creatures up close and with the company of good friends. Up next, from the savanna, we make our way to the tea plantations and forts of Nyungwe where the serious hiking begins in search of small monkeys and big apes. 